What's up, guys? It's Friday, and so you know what time it is. It's time for What the Fitness. You know the drill. Like, subscribe, comment, algorithm. Let's get them. So this one is from an account called Motivational Doc, and he's holding a package of bread. I feel like there's some bread demonization coming here. Everyone seems to love bread, but bread is not gonna love us back because this is That's gonna not true. spike My our bread glucose and insulin loves levels. Me. This has a high glycemic index. Those Spicy sugars me, whatever. get right into the cells super quick, but- Super quick, very technical you. terms. Here. You know that if you take your white bread and you freeze it, that's right, if you freeze it in the freezer, and then you defrost and eat it, the glycemic index is going to drop 31%. This is because the starch molecules in the bread take on a different structure as a result of freezing. Mm. And what's even more interesting is that once you defrost it and then you toast it, the glycemic index can even go a little bit lower. And what does that mean? That means a lower glycemic index means that you can reverse insulin resistance increase insulin sensitivity, have more first energy, time you have piece your of bread cardiovascular system work resistance. at a more optimal level. So you can stay healthy for a long life. Work at a more optimal level. Things said by charlatans. Uh -huh. Yeah, I really just hate nebulous terms. With this particular video, I'm going to give him some credit first. It does appear to be true that if you freeze and heat up certain starchy carbohydrates, it changes the glycemic response of those carbohydrates. Now let me explain to you what the glycemic index is real quick. So the glycemic index is tested by taking a specific carbohydrate source like sweet potato or potato or bread or fruit, whatever, and getting 50 grams of carbohydrate from that particular source and having people ingest it and then looking at their glycemic response. So that sounds great. Okay, we're gonna reduce the glycemic index, the glycemic response. Here's the first problem. The glycemic index only appears to be relevant when you're eating carbohydrates by itself. When you eat carbohydrates as part of a mixed meal, having protein and fat in that meal pretty much blunts out the differences in glycemic index between different carbohydrate sources. The second thing is, it's just not really supported by data. If we look at the studies where they have equated calories. Oh, there's that pesky term again. Equating calories. The thing that all charlatans hate to hear. So if we equate calories and we look at diets that are low glycemic versus high glycemic, there are no differences in weight loss, fat loss, and also really no difference in long-term markers of insulin sensitivity like HbA1c. So if glycemic index was so powerful, even if we equated calories, we should see differences in insulin sensitivity, but we don't. And that's because the majority of long-term insulin sensitivity is driven by changes in fat mass. So reducing fat mass overall will make you more insulin sensitive. And that can happen through what? Da -da -da -da! Calorie deficit. That being said, I would say choosing to eat foods that are lower glycemic is not necessarily a bad approach because those foods tend to be higher in fiber, they tend to be more satiating, and so those foods can still be useful for fat loss, but it's not because of glycemic index, it's because they have more fiber and they're more satiating. Even in a study years ago where they provided food to participants, they had them go on diets that were high glycemic, and when I say high glycemic, over 100 grams of sucrose per day, or low glycemic, which was about 10 grams of sucrose per day. That's a tenfold difference in sucrose intake, and quite a large difference in overall glycemic index over the course of the day. They equated calories, equated macros. Both groups lost the same amount of weight, body fat, and the changes in lean mass were the same. And again, the markers of cardiometabolic health were the same. Sure, I guess if you wanna freeze your bread and then toast it, that's fine, it's not gonna hurt you, but it's not the longevity elixir this guy's making it out to be. To work your brain at a more optimal level, optimal functioning level, make sure you click the links in the description, check out my research review reps, get yourself learned, and I'll catch you next week.